Hey guys, welcome back to Kerbal Space Program. Welcome to Season 2, the Interplanetary Missions. Or at least that's my, uh, my intention anyway. Um, so the entirety of last season was pretty much just taking over Minmus. We got ourselves a little um, refuel depot set up there and then we built a little... I'm going to call it a buggy because that, you know, that's basically what it was, a little buggy that drove around and did all the science for us so we could completely complete Minmus. We didn't quite completely complete Minmus because obviously there was things like EVAs and crew reports and, and those little like bits of science here and there that for some reason I completely forget to, uh, to deal with myself. Um, now if we come into the, uh, the science depot here, you will see that we have a whopping, I'm going to say 3,000, 2,800 points of science to be, spare, to, to be spent. Um, now, I have three purchases that I really want to do, um, just bearing in mind that we're going into planetary. The first one is obviously the mainsail. There is no way we're getting anywhere without, without the mainsail, so we're going to go with that. Um, the next one is this miniaturization, because I like making um, small orbiters. Um, one of the first missions I think we're going to do is send an orbiter out to Juna. Um, you know, get, get our own like DRO on the go, that's the uh, Juna Reconnaissance Orbiter. Um, so yeah, we'll, we'll get that. And the other one that I think is really important is these rover wheels, because I want to do, as I say, like um, unmanned exploration out, out of Juna. Basically copy all the, all the um, rovers and landers and stuff that have gone out to, to Mars. So we're going to need this sort of stuff. All right. Now, from this point on, it's it's all a bit subjective, really. Um, now, I want to take this one because it, you know, it, it completes the tree, and I, and I like nice complete trees. Uh, the other thing I want to do is work on these two. Um, get 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 flight being being better. Just like I, um, you you didn't see this last season, but more than once I tried to uh, take take vessels up into the atmosphere get up going fast enough to uh, kind of skip out into all yeah with these rubbish ones back here somewhere yeah this one you just you just don't have the thrust um, another thing i want to get obviously the uh, advanced grabbing unit we're going to go find an asteroid and turn it into a base um we, we may or may not bring it back to kerbal um we may just have it as like some sort of staging post out in the middle of nowhere or something yeah i'm not i'm not entirely sure i just know that we can do stuff with asteroids and you know let, let's do this one because it's kind of just floating there in the middle and we've got this command pod which command pod which uh is one of the really good ones actually I, I i quite like it you can turn it into well i use it to make aqua pig if you don't know what aqua pig is go look back in my um uh what's it called uh video list feed list um back there you will find aqua pig and um a whole load of like submarining stuff uh yeah that, that, that was quite good we, we we took some stuff out into the middle of the ocean and just kind of like thrusted our engines downwards trying to keep that thing balanced was a nightmare but anyway right so we've still got 120 uh, 1260 science left now that three 300 a pop this isn't gonna Wow, look at that. Now, I've not had a proper look through all this, so what I'm going to do is take a few moments just to go through and read them all, because obviously a lot of these have just opened up now, uh, and see which ones kind of line up with the ideas that I have. I mean, uh, big rover wheels aren't really go going for it. Oh, so there was science. Oh, ion drives. Do we want to do ion drives? I really like ion drives. I just never really get around to using them. Uh, maybe that's maybe that's going to be a name for this mission uh, for this season. Let's let's try and use them somewhere. Uh, oh, bigger solar panels. That's a must. Uh, what have we got here? More science. That's also a must. Um, this is all oh, all oh, probe bodies. Oh, so this is our last one. We're gonna have to look carefully. No, that one's not. I'm not too interested in that one. Further miniaturization. The stack connector. The heavy drilling unit. That could be useful. Lots of stack separators. No, no, no. This this one's still winning so far. Um, that's the one we just clicked on. Uh, what have we got here? Uh, the launch escape system. Yeah. The cupola. That, that could be good. Uh, land a can and a large RS fuel tank. Or the nuclear power. Okay, so it boils down to brains or nukes. Brains or nukes. I reckon we could do it with the brains and we'll get the nukes next time. Because it's like 300 science. We can get 300 science by a small mission to the moon. I don't intend to do any small missions to the moon, but that, that could be what we do. All right, so that's all the all the science spent. There we go, guys. May have been a little bit um, slow for the beginning of season two, but, you know, that's what we... Oh, excuse me. That's what, we, that's what we had to do. We had to spend all the science from Minmus. 
All right, so welcome to the VAB. Uh, we're going to do things a little bit differently this time round. Uh, well, this season anyway. Uh, last season, I like just made do with recording stuff um, ahead of schedule and then uh, voiceovering over the top of it later on in post-production. Well, this time I'd like to explain what I'm doing as I'm doing it. So what we're doing right here is trying to make a, um, a replica of the Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter, but for Juna. Uh, I've gone and made some, some notes about what I want. And the first thing that I noticed was it was a bit, bit like this shape. Um, when you look at it in orbit, it's thuswards. Um, but you know we can we, we can deal with that we, we'll just rearrange things a little bit uh i'm not sure that that's the right direction though we we want this one um so that we can get some flat edges on the bits that we want now the main thing is it's got an antenna up top i can never remember what this one looks like oh wow when it's been um expanded out that's oh it's not gonna just sit there nicely is it can we just sit it here? Just just like that? No, it doesn't want to do it. No, it will stick on at any other funny angle, but there we go. Um, I have no idea if that's what we want or not, but it looks good enough for me. Uh, the next thing we want is this multi-spectral analyzer. Um, wow, he really doesn't like this probe unit, does it? Okay, so let's just find a spot like that, and then we'll swing around until we get the look that we're going for. Almost that. Almost. There we go. That's the look we're going for. Apart from it won't like it. Ah, uh, joys. There. No, not there. There, there. Ah, oh, this, this really is what I'm looking for, though. Just like that, and that way up. That would be ideal, but it's, it's not going to have it. Because these things never do, really, do they? Um... I might have to stick some structural support between that and that. Okay, so what's the next thing we need to do? We'll, we will figure that bit out in a second. What we need to do now is to try and put this gravio... No, that's the pressure. Oh, do I not have the gravioli detector? No, I do not. Oh, that's a little bit inconvenient. Um, right, so we'll stick a thermometer on the side then instead, because, you yeah, know, that, that works, right? And we'll get back to trying to do this okay there's probably going to be a savage jump cut here while i try and figure out how to make this fit brilliant exactly spot on what we're trying to do okay so that's the main instrumentation and stuff like that we were going for what's next well next we need some thrust some some way of it it moving around under its own power now i particularly like the idea of where are they this little one just here brilliant let's let's get the center of uh center of center of mass oh that's so close to the center that we might as well just call it there um right so with that there what we're going to do is get these tiny little engines there we go love them uh we're going to pop two of those two of those uh it's a bit hard to see with all that stuff in the way isn't it let's just pop that there get get rid of that again um, and then try and grab these engines point them in the right direction we can find the way that is the right direction and as it's ever so slightly like that we'll do it like that we'll, and we will recheck re our balances and stuff later but i think no we're not done we need we need energy power power is the must here so what have we got a gantry rail uh so towards the end past all the robotic stuff now I instinctively want to put these ones on because I think they're the best looking ones but we did just get some nice big ones as well but I'm not sure if big ones are really suited for this particular style of vessel I mean it is a uh, I mean look at it, it's tiny what, what, what do we want to put, put extra stuff on there for all right so let's find the decouplers like so and with that going on the bottom I think that is all we need to do. Oh, what one thing that I really must remember to do if I have it. I don't know. I don't know if I do. Um, no, I don't. All right. So one thing I must remember to do is just put like some power on there that doesn't require uh, being deployed. If you see what I mean, because inevitably I will get up there. I will do something silly, um, as I almost always do. 
and we'll end up with, with no power, especially as this thing has no batteries. It does have two probe units. Okay, so I think um, the uh, DRO, that's the Juno Reconnaissance Orbiter, we'll put this in here. Juno Re... Oh, oh how to spell reconnaissance? Con reconnaissance. But, like, you can correct me in the comments if you like, but if you're that type of person, you're watching the wrong series because you're just going to be correcting me in the comments all the time. Uh, I do know how to spell orbiter though so th there we go i say that that's probably wrong as well uh right so we'll save it and we're gonna go just make sure that when we put it outside it doesn't shake itself apart or do anything like anything like that really uh we've got to make sure that everything works everything does the job that it wants to do and it doesn't spontaneously explode loading screens i hate them Okay, so far so good. I really thought I was in the vehicle assembly building, but here we go, finding ourselves out here. Uh, okay, so the first thing I've noticed is when I turned it upside down, thinking it was upside down, it was already upside down. That's no good. Um, let's see if these engines have enough power to push it up, and then we'll... Ooh, wow, yes, it does. Uh, so it's not at all balanced. So, more work is needed. Let's get back into the thing and fire out vehicle assembly. There we go. Well, that, that was a valuable 24 seconds, guys. Okay, so this is exactly the same um, setup, apart from I made sure these are the right way. Well, in fact, what I did was I took this fuel can off and put it down there. Um, I also put the keythane scanner on because I forgot to do that. Um, and it's well balanced enough to just hold itself up um, via its SAS, but let's um, fire some engines up and see how it flies. Oh yes, that oh no, that's beautiful, absolutely amazing. Let's uh, go this way. Let's see if we can see the model. Oh no, no, we ain't going nowhere, are we? Okay, so just for effect, let's extend this out. Um, now, if I was going to be doing a true Mars reconnaissance orbiter um, looky likey thing, this needs to be on some sort of um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Pivot, so it can point forwards. Um, and also, it's a it's a it's a tiny bit large, really, for the size of it. But other than that, this is all good. I mean, once this gets extended out, oh, is this going to have the same trouble as that? Yeah, there we go. Um, apart from we didn't have time to look at, but once once all the instrumentation gets extended out underneath, the uh, resemblance is actually quite uncanny. But there we go. That's uh, everything there, nice and um, nice and set up. Uh, I, I, thi I think that's everything we need. If anyone can think of anything different, well, I would say let me know in the comments, but this thing will be we're, uh, winging on its way. Let me know anyway, so I can know how much of a fool I've been. Right, okay, so, decoupler. Um, I took it off just for balancing reasons, so I could make sure that I had the right the right stuff on the go. Um, and now I'm... Ooh. I'm sure I pressed shift when I clicked that. Now I'm literally just going to send... Uh, spend... 20 minutes or so uh, designing a little booster to go underneath this um, I don't think we really need to, to witness the whole thing of that um, I'll be recording anyway so if there's any highlights I'll let you know but I should imagine all that's going to happen is I'm going to put a central core in the middle well no I'm going to put an interplanetary stage here um, which will probably be uh, a small, a, a relatively small tank with an efficient engine underneath it. Then just like the normal, like massive cluster of engines underneath to get us up. We've got the mainsail now, so it'll be an orange tank in the middle. But yeah, um, I'm gonna get get going. Uh, does ten sound good? Ten of them. Ten, ten rocket engines. To coupler. <laughs> Why yes, it is quite a big one. Thank you. But of course, bigger is better. Um, not always to be held true, but yeah, there we go. Doth thou asparagus? I think we're going to expect asparagus. It, it just makes sense, really. Too much? What is this concept you speak of? Uh, right, so let's get in and do the actual asparagus thing. The main thing that I think might go wrong with this is that these burn down quicker than this outside lot need to go, which, you know, I think we could live with. I think we could live with that, um, mainly by reverting the flight and coming back and adding more fuel cells on the outside. Because that's 
obviously the way to deal with having uh, an uneven burn. Right, we just get this last one going in there. A uh, quick rundown of what's going to happen. Uh, all the fuel is going to drain out of this one into that one, um, which all that fuel is basically being burned by all the rockets so that when that goes, we can drop off the this one and the one on the other side in pairs, um, lightening the load as quickly as possible while still allowing all the engines to um, fire. Uh, who put support struts running right into the bottom like that? What idiot did this? All right, and with the drop in my frame rate, I think we're about ready to go. I'm gonna hit the save button, not the load, and not the new, the save button, and we'll launch, and I'm probably gonna to switch to post commentary um, with the launch, because, uh, you know, launches just take fucking forever. And here we are at launch. Now, we were supposed to be here, like, five minutes in real time later. It turns out it's been a couple of days because while I was trying to track down whatever it was that was causing the frame lag, uh, I found out that the CPU fan on top of my CPU, obviously, uh, had suddenly decided to uh, come unattached from the heat sink. And yeah, so that resol resolved in me, resulted in me getting all sorts of new equipment and stuff. So yay, new heat sink. Uh, right, so, I have a small confession with this as well. You'll notice around the outside there are uh, winglets and on top there are um, inline control systems. Uh, that's because of this test flight up in the corner right now. It turns out that wouldn't you know it, if you're using like upteen billion solid boosters you don't actually have much control over your direction of flight there were also two other test flights one which resulted well both of them uh, were the same fault uh, staging mishaps this one here sent all my engines um yeah that was good and then when i thought i had actually fixed the in the entire problem this one here uh not only did i do it like that the the uh, the, the second ones went and yeah I, just, just the whole lot was in the wrong order but with those inevitable teething troubles now all ironed out we can turn our minds to the mods that i'm using in this season as we are in episode one i suppose it's only fair for me to let you know what mods i'm using uh there's not that many really uh i've got infernal robotics um installed because it's nice to have moving parts not that I've used them so far in, in the use of this. I'm going to say mod pack, but, you know, the, this collection of mods that I've put together. Um, the one that I've used most often is the Kerbal Attachment System. I love that thing. Um, not only for making bases, but also for, um, you yeah, know, just making EVA more useful. Uh, up there now, you'll see me using the Kerbal Alarm Clock um, and also performing a uh, small staging. Uh, the alarm clock is um, a, for twofold reasons, really. Uh, not only am I the most forgetful person on this planet, um, which is, is a little bit annoying when you have um, probes that need to be dealt with at certain times and such forth. So not only, I'm also the most impatient, so I also quite often end up warping past my my um, manoeuvre nodes and the alarm clock thankfully includes a way of um, stopping your warp when you get close to a manoeuvre node. Alright so you saw on my alarm clock there that I've actually got 15 days uh, until the transfer window to, to Juna. Now that's a long time to do. To, to just like float around or, or even to time warp. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna circularize my orbit here as according to that maneuver node right there. And also, one thing that I really need to do right now, in, in, like right now, just maybe, oh, not even, like I should have done it before I turned this ship around. I need to deploy my solar panels because as I said, in the building i do stupid things like right now i am turning my solar panel away from the sun and thankfully at that point i click and remember that i should do something about it but yes the real question is what are we going to do in these 15 days well i thought we could go around and mop up some of the kerbal signs like uh, i've just got some plane parts so next episode We'll be uh, going around and making ideally a space plane, but failing that we're just going to make some sort of quite fastly traversing the planet plane. Um, obviously like one of the main problems with planes is they are slow, uh, especially compared to rockets. You get, you get up into orbit and you're, you're around the planet in a few minutes. Um, you're, you're down on the surface in a few minutes, all you've done is travel 100 meters and that's rubbish. Right, so 
during this uh, this manoeuvre burn that makes makes my circularised orbit nice and circular, yes, English, I'm going to say thank you very much for joining me for this design and launch process. Next time we'll be doing space planes, and the time after that I should imagine we're going to go see Juna. Until then then, bye bye!